Hello gentlemen, welcome to section 2.6 in our video on the quantum mechanical model of the atom. In class, we modeled the quantum mechanical model of the atom after a movie theater. Now, in that movie theater, we kind of summarized um, that we have seven different energy levels in our atom. Each energy level consists of sublevels of energy, and those sublevels of energy have different orbitals. And we'll talk about what an orbital is in just a moment. But for my first energy level, I have one sublevel, and it's sublevel letter S. Sublevel letter S has one orbital. In my second energy level, I have two sublevels, sublevel S and sublevel P. And I have one orbital for sublevel S and three orbitals for sublevel P. And this trend continues as we rise in energy. In energy level three, I have three sublevels, S, P, and D. And the number of orbitals for each sublevel in S, I have one orbital, P, three orbitals, D, five orbitals. In energy levels four, five, six, and seven, they have the same structure. They have four sublevels, S, P, D, and F. I can have no more than four sublevels in an energy level. And the number of orbitals correspond as one, three, five, seven, respectively. Now, the orbitals that are located in these sublevels have their own specific shapes, and they're here. Orbital S has a spherical shape. So think three-dimensional. This is a sphere of space. And inside these orbitals are the electrons. Sublevel P has three orbitals. Each orbital looks like this, like a sideways infinity sign, or like a dumbbell shape, they call it three-dimensional, you know, shape. And the electrons are found in there. I have three of those for sublevel P. For sublevel D, I have five orbitals that look like this, like a four-leaf clover. And the electrons are inside of each of these orbitals to a piece. In sublevel F, it does have a shape, but it's a very complex shape, and I'm not going to go into drawing it here on the board. You can look it up online, and you'll definitely see how complex the shape is. Now, these shapes are based on mathematical descriptions of locating an electron at any given time. It has to be a mathematical description because we cannot see electrons and observe their behavior directly. We must you know, to rely on probability and mathematical, I guess, hypotheses. The best you can do is construct a mathematical model that best fits your experimental results. Now, let's talk a little bit more about that. We must determine the location of an electron in terms of probability. We can't know exactly where it is. We just have to make a probable assumption. This idea came from a guy named Werner Heisenberg. For those guys who are Breaking Bad fans, that's where he got his name from, you know, Heisenberg. So Breaking Bad, that's my little picture of Heisenberg there. Now, he came up with a, a principle called the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. It says that it's impossible to precisely determine the exact position, 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 Decision. and momentum of an electron at the same time. The very process of looking at an electron causes the electron to move somewhere else. Meaning, in order to look at an electron, I have to move light in that direction, because we can't see without light. So if we look at something that has electrons, that light gives energy to the electrons, and that electron goes. So we can't look at the electron and see its exact position and know how fast it's moving at the same time because the very act of looking at an electron will make it change its location and change its momentum. And from Breaking Bad, Heisenberg got his name because the character in Breaking Bad said it was impossible to precisely know exactly where he was and the impact of his momentum at the same time. He was an elusive character. That's why the name Heisenberg stuck with him. Now, this point up here, this is why we say the word orbitals now. 
and not orbits. Niels Bohr said orbit. He thought that electrons were in these elliptical paths here going around the nucleus. So we can kind of, we can predict those kind of orbits, just like in our solar system. We can predict the orbits around the sun. But for electrons, you can't predict them. They're not exact orbits. Rather, these electrons are in these mathematically described spaces here called orbitals. They're in this three-dimensional space somewhere in there. We can't pinpoint exactly where. So we don't say orbits because that gives the notion that it's direct, improbable, and you can just predict exactly where it is. Whereas orbitals, it's saying it's based on probability. It's somewhere in this spot. That's not probable. That's predictable, I meant to say. Not probable. This is probable. So gentlemen, please take notes on this and hopefully learn a little bit more than just the Breaking Bad Facts. Adios.